In this video, we're going to introduce the inverse trig functions. I know I said we were going to do that last video, but this time I mean it. Here is the sign of x. It is not invertible. We've said that none of the trig functions are. And graphically, although we didn't write it down in the previous set of notes, you might remember from earlier classes the horizontal line test. A curve is not invertible if a horizontal line can be drawn that intersects it more than once. What we say is, okay, the sign isn't invertible, but maybe we're not looking at the sign on the entire real number line. Maybe we've got some restriction on the sign. For example, we could look at the sign from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And now suddenly this function has become invertible. Any horizontal line you draw will cut this curve either at once or never. So the sign would be invertible if instead of looking at it as a function on the real number line, we looked at it as a function on some interval. So here is how the inverse trig functions work. For each of the six trig functions, we define an interval such that Two things happen. One, the range of the trig function on the interval is the same as the range of the trig function on its natural domain. Let's go back and look at our graph. The range of the sign ordinarily is between negative one and one. And you see that for every number between these values, this restricted sign function hits it. it reaches the minimum value, the maximum value, and all the values in between. So on this restricted 
direction. The sign still has a range of one. Second restriction, we select our interval such that the trig function is one to one on the interval. And now we take the inverses, not of the trig functions themselves, those don't have inverses, but we take the inverses of the restricted. Trig functions. We cannot take the inverse of the sine function, but we can take the inverse of this. These are called the inverse trigonometric functions. And there are two possible pieces of notation we could use. The first is to take the trig function you're looking at. So we're taking the inverse of the restrict design and we just put a little negative one up there and we call this the inverse sign. Or we could put the letters A, R, C in front of the trig function and call this the arc sign. I think this terminology is getting pretty old fashioned, but the perk of being the professor, I suppose, is that I can use old fashioned notation if I want to. And I'll be using this arc notation, the arc sine, the arc cosine, the arc tangent, and so on. And, you know, it's a little old fashioned maybe, but if I tell Desmos, give me the arc sign, Desmos knows what I'm talking about. So it's maybe a touch old fashioned, but it's not obsolete. It is still in use. Let's end this video with a summary. Every trig function is restricted to some little interval so that we can take its inverse. That interval is different for the different trig functions. Here are the restrictions. The sine of x in this closed interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 
the cosine from zero to pi, again, a closed interval, the tangent, negative pi over two to pi over two again, but this time an open interval. The secant and the cosecant both have awkward restrictions. Um, there is no way to help that. The secant and the cosecant have restrictions on their domain, and any set that doesn't change their range is going to include an asymptote. So the secant from zero to pi over two, union from pi over two to pi, the cosecant from negative pi over two to zero, union from zero to pi over two. And then the cotangent has a nice interval, actually, just from zero to pi. And let's restrict, let's, sorry, let's tie this back to something I said in the previous video, where I said we wanted to be able to solve things like this using inverse trig functions. So here's the thing, the sine of x equals 0.7 has an infinite number of solutions. However, on this interval, the sign is one to one. It only has one solution. So what happens if we take the arc sign of both sides of this equality, the function and the inverse cancel. On the right, we get the arc sine of 0.7. The inverse trig functions are in your TI-84 calculators, although they use the other notation, the negative one notation. I am just going to use this online tool, Wolfram Alpha. You see Wolfram Alpha understands the arc sign. It does seem to think also, as I said, that it's a little old fashioned. Are you sure you wouldn't rather use this notation instead? But anyway, we get this answer, 0.775397. It's an infinite, um, infinite decimal. Let me, before I go back to the written notes, let me copy that down. So there are an infinite number of solutions. This only gives us one solution. In particular, it gives us the solution in this interval. If we want other solutions, there are ways of getting them, but that's not relevant to this course. So we pass over that material.